In today's video, we will take an in-depth look at the menu structure in Kinefinity Terra, Mavo, and Mavo LF. Kinefinity uses a simple and intuitive menu system to control all available settings. There are three levels of menus. The first level is what we call the quick menus. Specific buttons on the camera body or side grip are reserved for one or two tasks which are frequently needed, like ISO, resolution, white balance, but also audio adjustment and SSD card management. The second level is the main menu, which you can access via the config button. There is a third hidden menu section, which is called the calibration mode. Calibration mode can only be accessed by booting the camera while holding the config button. In calibration mode, there are certain advanced features available, which you won't find under the normal operation mode. Keep in mind that as Kinefinity is continuously optimizing the user interface, certain buttons or menu functions may be reassigned in future firmware releases. Today, we're using KineOS 6.4. First, let's explore the main menu. It includes the categories Shooting, Live View, Settings, LUT, Sync, and System. The shooting menu includes everything that has a direct effect on your shooting, such as sensor and project frame rate, image formats, etc. The default codec option allows you to choose which flavor of ProRes or Cinema DNG you're recording in. In the future, further raw options will be included here. Slate is a secondary menu that allows you to enter metadata for your clips, which are automatically updated each time you press record. Custom Sensor FPS allows you to add three custom off-speed frame rates, which you can then access through the sensor frame rate control on the main screen. Project FPS is the master frame rate setting for your project. This is the frame rate that you intend to finish your project in, for example, 25 FPS in Europe. It is separate from the sensor frame rate, which is the frame rate speed you're actually capturing, which again is set on the main screen. If you're recording sync sound, both need to be set the same. Higher sensor frame rates result in slow motion and lower rates in quick motion. Project blanking allows you to set an on-screen framing mat for different aspect ratios. It does not affect the resolution you're actually recording. Format SSD will erase and rebuild your SSD card. There are two types of formatting, NTFS and HFS. Changing the formatting type can only be done in the calibration mode. Image format is the master control for selecting the sensor area you are recording. FF, full frame, allows up to 6K resolution and uses the full sensor area. S35, super 35 mm, is up to 4K and allows the use of many lenses that cover that sensor size and allows higher frame rates than full frame. Micro Four Thirds and Super 16 are smaller sensor sizes and offer even higher frame rates. Sensitivity Mode. This selects how the camera treats sensitivity and is a bit complicated but very important to understand. There are two options, ISO Mode and EI mode. We have made an extensive video explaining in detail the difference between ISO mode and EI mode. You'll find a link in the description of this video if you want to find out more about this. If you're not familiar with EI mode, it's best to stick with ISO mode. ISO highlight stops is where you can select the range of your highlights. This setting only goes into effect in ISO mode. You have a range from 3.6 to 5.6 stops. We also made a detailed video explaining Kinefinity's highlight stop setting, which you can also find in the description here below. Save as preset is a way to record all your current photographic settings into a preset, which you can later quickly switch to with the four-way control buttons. A preset will include your current settings for sensor area, resolution, sensor frame rate, shutter speed, and recording codec. It does not affect your project frame rate or other photographic settings. You have eight slots for presets here, and they can later be activated by pressing the up or shutter button twice. The live view includes everything related to monitoring and displays. Custom white balance allows you to set a manual white balance using a gray or white card. 
Guide is a submenu offering many options for on-screen framing guides like crosshair and safe area. Waveform selects whether your on-screen waveform reflects brightness values of the log image or after the LUT has been applied. The log image is what's being recorded, so setting the waveform to check log is most useful. Zebra Pattern allows you to set an exposure check level for your zebras. Magnify selects which levels of focus check zoom are available. Anamorphic Lens allows you to choose an anamorphic de-squeeze factor for monitoring when shooting with anamorphic lenses. This does not affect the recording itself. Video Output FPS selects the frame rate and frequency of the video outputs on the camera if your external monitor requires it. Shutter Mode lets you select whether the shutter is expressed in fractions of a second, which is independent of frame rate, or in degrees, which is always in relation to the frame rate and is standard in cinema cameras. Color Templist chooses whether only the most common color temperatures are selectable, or if every temperature in steps of 100 degrees Kelvin are selectable. At this point, it's worth mentioning that there is a tint adjust function in the white balance menu. To access it, you simply press the magnify button once you're inside the white balance selection, which then lets you adjust the tint. Mirror provides options for flipping the image in different ways. Flip refers to a horizontal flip. Flop is vertical, and flip-flop means both at the same time. The settings menu has more advanced controls, including things like power management and time code. Active mount turns on and off the electronic contacts in the mount. The standard or enhanced modes allows the camera to receive metadata from and to control electronic iris on certain lenses. Some lenses work only with one or the other mode, so make sure to check both modes for every lens you use. For fully manual lenses that provide no metadata, especially ones with exposed metal on the mount, disable the active mount to avoid potential short circuits. Also be sure to check Kinefinity's EF lens whitelist for compatible lenses Fan speed lets you control the speed and noise level of the camera fan. You can select off for complete silence, but watch out that the camera doesn't overheat. Fan stop gives you the ability to turn the fan off while recording. Again, be cautious of overheating. If you're recording long takes in a hot environment, this option is not advisable. Wi-Fi power turns the Wi-Fi module for remote control on and off. Time code allows you to choose free run, record run, or external time code settings. Set record TC sets the starting time code for record run time code. ND adjust is a setting for the Kinefinity Electronic ND mount adapters and lets you choose the size of the steps between levels of ND it offers. This can be 0.3, which means steps of one stop of ND, and 0.03 which is a tenth of a stop. Main screen chooses whether standard shooting info or no info is displayed on screen when shooting. Clip end affects playback and whether the clip should loop to the beginning when finished or simply stop. Power threshold is the lowest voltage rating that the camera batteries can reach before automatic shutdown. Low voltage shutdown chooses whether the camera automatically shuts down when the power threshold is reached. This will display a 30 second countdown before the camera powers off to allow you to end the recording of your take and avoid getting a corrupted file. LUT. This menu allows you to load custom LUTs using the USB 3 connection. Make sure your USB media is formatted in FAT16 or FAT32 file systems. The Sync menu provides options for syncing two Mavo cameras together for 3D rigs and similar setups. System Language selects the language used for menus and information. System date time is exactly what it sounds like. The camera has an internal battery to maintain this information, but do check it after long periods of disuse. Factory Reset resets all the camera settings to default. Update Firmware allows you to perform a firmware update using the USB 3 connection. And finally, About shows a screen of information about firmware versions, serial number, usage hours, and so on. Now let's have a look at the calibration mode.
As its name suggests, this mode will unlock certain advanced features serving the maintenance of your camera. To access calibration mode, press and hold the config button while booting the camera. The manufacturer says for 5 seconds, but it's best to hold the config button until the camera has booted. Note that in calibration mode, you won't see the camera's image because it's not meant to be used for shooting. These are the settings which are currently only available in calibration mode. In the shooting menu now, there is a true rebuild function for Kinemag SSDs, which is supposed to bring its performance back to the levels when it was new. If you have END adapter attached, you'll find under Live View, there is a function called ND and then a certain value. Its use is reserved for the manufacturer or authorized Kinefinity service partners. Under Settings, you'll find Light Meter Adjust, which lets you change how the camera monitors exposure if your light meter or another camera do not match it in displaying middle gray at the correct brightness value. This is not to be confused with the ISO setting itself and should normally be left at zero. Still under Settings, we have the choice of the SSD format called SSD File System, where you can choose between HFS format for Mac and NTFS format for Windows. Under LUT, there is an additional setting called Gain Override. This feature is also reserved for use by the manufacturer or authorized Kinefinity service partners. Finally, under System, you'll find the black balancing function which calibrates the camera sensor for absence of light. To engage it, you need to cover the lens and stop down the iris. Once started, it will take from a few seconds up to a couple of minutes to balance the blacks. This only needs to be done every once in a while, like before the next big project, or when you feel like the noise behavior of your camera has worsened over time. That covers it for our video today. Make sure to check out our other tutorial videos about Kinefinity camera systems. You'll find the links in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, happy shooting.